So hello, as you heard, my name is Greg Dudek. I'm going to go a bit crazy fast with this presentation. I do robotics and intelligent systems. And I, I think the thing that's neat about our lab is we do systems that go into the real world. I characterize them as cool systems that go in the real world. I'm in computer science, so we work on algorithms, that is software principles by which robots could work. And in particular, our work deals with understanding the nature of intelligence, because we want to build things that emulate intelligence. And also ideas that I think in some sense will change the world, because we're going to see robotics in our cars, in our stoves, in our phones, everywhere. It's coming now. So some of our work involves robots that swim, say, on a coral reef, trying to understand a coral reef. This is McGill's facility in Barbados in the Caribbean. And one of the questions we might worry about is, what kind of terrain am I walking on? So we'd like to have a robot that can walk on different kinds of terrain, for example, sand in this case, feel the sand, and understand that this is sand. And so how do you learn about the different kinds of terrains you're on? We'd like to know things like, where should I go next? If you're an intelligent robot, it has to choose where it's going. So for example, uh, and once you go there, you'd like to look, know what to look at. So here's some, an experiment being run at the Canadian Space Agency, right near Montreal, right near McGill. And, and this robot's going to be walking across the sand, and it just has to choose what are the interesting things I want to go and look at and report back on. Did I see a little green guy walking around? Should I report back on it, even though it's not the rock I was looking for? Um, what are the principles that you can decide that something is interesting, that you can use to decide something's interesting? Uh, how do you adjust your actions to avoid slipping once you know what kind of terrain you're on? This is a question we'll have to deal with very soon as Montrealers, right? Here's the robot walking on ice. It's kind of dark in that video. But when you're walking on ice, you have to adjust the foot placement, the gait, to walk in a different way from when you're walking on sand or snow, other kinds of terrains. And how do you walk as a team? If you have a group of vehicles moving around, here we've got a robot boat showing driving around some lake, and it's working with a vehicle underwater, then how do those two things work together? And they have to meet to work together. But if you meet too often, then you spend all your time in meetings, like I sometimes do, and you don't get any work done. <laughs> so it's doing those things together. Here's an example of a plane overflying some space and a boat down on the ground, and they're trying to co coordinate where the boat should go to collect data. So one of our big problems is data summarization. We want the robot to go out somewhere and come back with a summary of our trip, its trip. It's much like the thing you do when you go on a holiday and you want to come back with vacation snapshots. So we'll call that the vacation snapshot problem. And the key thing is to find photos of interesting places, and that leads to the question of what is interesting intrinsically. And so that you might have to do this if you're a robot going to Mars or undersea or surveying a dangerous building. It's work that's inspired by human psychology. We don't actually use psychology per se most of the time. Unusual things for people are the things that are interesting. It's uh, very much based on information theory, which some of my students work on. And of course, all the hard work is done by my students. Some of the open questions are, what is a good summary? Is it the typical stuff you saw or the unique stuff? And the answer is, it's stuff that's unique with respect to what's typical, but you have to be able to kind of get the idea of both across. Another question we work on is, when should a robot ignore its programming because it knows that your programming is wrong? And a third question is, what sort of languages do we have to develop and mechanisms to let people and robots talk to each other? If I'm working with a robot, I have to have a way of controlling it in a convenient and usable way. And of course, all the hard work's done by my students. Not a great photo of them here, but there's a mixture of undergrads and grad students pretty tightly coupled in most of our experiments. Thanks.